Hey there, I'm Linz and my pronouns are they, them, theirs, and I am the creator of Queer Kid Stuff. And this is my best friend, Teddy. We are so excited to be sharing more Queer Kid Stuff with you. Together, Teddy and I are taking a look back at some of our favorite Queer Kid Stuff episodes with this compilation video. If you want to check out more cool Queer Kid stuff like our new project, Dear Queer Kid, you can sign up for our weekly newsletter and look at our website, QueerKidStuff.com, and support us on Patreon. If you love this video, don't forget to share it with a friend. Enjoy! Welcome to Queer Kid Stuff. I'm Lindsay and this is my best friend Teddy, and today we're going to talk about gender. stuff. Lindsay? Yes, Teddy? You're a girl, right? That's right. Why do you ask? Well, you have short hair and you're wearing a tie. I thought only boys have short hair and wear ties. You make a really good point, Teddy, but just because I'm a girl doesn't mean I can't wear those things too or anything else that I want to wear. If they want, girls can have short hair or long hair or wear tiaras, or bow ties. You can wear whatever you want, no matter if you're a boy or a girl. But boys can't wear dresses, can they? Well, why not? You should wear whatever clothes make you feel like the best version of yourself. It's the same for colors and toys, too. You can like whatever color or toy that makes you happy. I'm a boy or a girl. Well, Teddy, did you know that some people aren't boys or girls? Some people are boys, some people are girls, and some people are people. There are also people who are trans or transgender. People who are trans do not identify with the gender doctors tell them they are when they are born. But we're going to talk about what it means to be trans in a later episode. Okay, I think I understand, but all of this is a little confusing. If there are boys and girls and people and all of them can wear ties and dresses, then how can I tell who is what gender? That's actually really easy, Teddy. All you have to do is ask someone what their pronoun is. A pronoun is the word you use to talk about someone when you don't use their name, like he for boy, she for girl, and some people use they. When you meet someone, just ask them what their pronoun is. Lindsay, what's your pronoun? I use she. What's your pronoun, Teddy? I don't feel like a she or a he, so I guess my pronoun is they. That's really awesome, Teddy. Okay, so now we want to know your pronoun in the comments below. See you next time on Queer Kid Stuff. Hey there, friends. Welcome back to Queer Kid Stuff. I'm Lindsay. And I'm Teddy. And we're back with more brand new episodes for season three. Today we're going to talk about gender and gender expression. Queer Kid Stuff. You are enough here at Queer Kid Stuff. Lindsay, Lindsay, I'm so excited to be back. Me too, Teddy. We still have so much more we need to talk about with our friends. You ready, Teddy? Ready, ready, ready. Okay, today we are talking about gender expression. More gender things? But I already know all about gender. You know a lot about gender, Teddy, but there's always more to learn. Gender is so complicated. Well, it can definitely seem that way, but today we're talking about gender expression, which is a little bit different than what we've talked about before. Ooh, gender expression. Gender expression is how you express or present your gender. Well, that's obvious, Lindsay. It's in the name. But what does it mean, really? Well, you remember when we talked about pronouns, Teddy? Of course, Lindsay. Some people use she pronouns, 
or he pronouns, or they pronouns. Well, that's all about gender identity. That's how you feel on the inside about your gender. Gender identity has to do with your feelings. Gender expression is all about the outside. It's about how you show the world how you feel about your gender. I don't get it. It's things like your hair and your clothes and how you stand, how you walk, everything. Those are all ways you can express yourself and your gender. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. And there are a couple words we use to describe this. Feminine, masculine, and androgynous. Androgy what? Androgynous. That's kind of between feminine and masculine. There are lots of different ways to be feminine, masculine, and androgynous. And anyone can be feminine, masculine, or androgynous, no matter their pronouns. But, but, what are they? Hmm, why don't I give you a couple of examples? It's way easier to show you than to tell you, Teddy. Let's take me, for example. I tend to look androgynous, but on the masculine side. You can see my hair is all short, and I wear button-downs, and bow ties, and jeans. These all things can all be masculine. People who are feminine might wear dresses and skirts. There are so many different ways to be masculine and feminine. I've asked a few of my friends to help me out with this one. I fall pretty far at the masculine end of the gender presentation spectrum. For me, that mostly means keeping my hair short and my beard bushy. I describe my gender expression as gender full or full of gender. I love wearing different hair, clothing, makeup, accessories, whether being traditionally feminine or masculine, mixing them up in different combinations to express myself on any given day. Something that is interesting about me is that my presentation, which is how I dress and look to the outside world, is fluid. However, my gender identity is not fluid. So whether I am dressed more masculinely, femininely, or androgynously, it is important that I always am addressed with they, them pronouns. I identify as a femme presenting woman. To me, this means that I like to dress up with lipsticks, dresses, and lots and lots of velvet. Being femme can mean many things to other people, but to me it's about putting on those really tall high heels on some days and on other days maybe just a comfy bright sweater. But I never take a picture without my lipstick. The most fun way for me to talk about my gender expression is to say that I identify as a femme prince, which for me means utilitarian but with tons of feminine influence. Everyone looks so good! Lindsay, am I expressing my gender right now? I don't know what my expression is. You are totally expressing your gender, Teddy. Hmm. To me, you look like you're more androgynous. Does that seem right to you? Yeah, I like that. I think I'm starting to get it, but it's sort of hard to understand. That's because there's no one definition of how a person can be feminine, masculine, or androgynous. Every person's gender expression is unique to them. And it's really fun to play and experiment with the way you dress so you can find out what works and feels best to you. Like playing dress up? Exactly like playing dress up. Something else that's really important to know is that you can't always tell someone's pronouns or gender identity just from their gender expression. Yeah, you can't tell someone's pronouns from what they look like. That's exactly right. So even if someone is feminine, they might not use she pronouns. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. We'll be doing a few more episodes about gender stuff coming up. You ready for that, Teddy? Yeah, Lindsay. Talking about gender is my favorite thing. I'm really glad, Teddy. Thank you so much for watching Queer Kid Stuff. We've got a whole new season of videos coming at you every other Wednesday. Don't forget to hit subscribe, like the Facebook page, and donate to our Patreon page, like these fine folks over here. And you can also check out our website, QueerKidStuff.com. We'll see, we'll you, see next you next time, time at Queer, Queer Kid Stuff. Hey there, friends. Welcome to Queer Kid Stuff. I'm Lindsay. And, and I'm Teddy. Today, we're talking about spectrums and gender. Stuff.
You ready, Teddy? Ready. Lindsay, Lindsay. Yes, Teddy? Are we talking more about gender? Yeah, Teddy, we are. I'm excited for today because this episode brings together everything we've been learning about gender. Everything? Well, pretty much, yeah. Today, we're talking about spectrums, specifically the gender spectrum. That sounds cool. The gender spectrum is pretty cool. And I brought another friend along to help us out. Wait, wait, Lindsay. I have another question. Yes, Teddy? Why are we in black and white? Oh. Well, it has to do with what we're talking about today. Oh, okay. But I miss color. I do too, but it'll be back really soon, I promise. Let's bring on my friend AC and you'll see what I'm talking about. Hi, AC. Hi, Lindsay. Hi, Teddy. Hi, AC. Teddy, I heard you might have some questions for me. Yes, yes, yes. What are your pronouns and how do you identify? I use they, them pronouns. That's just like me and Lindsay. And I identify as non-binary. Thanks for coming along. Think you can define what a spectrum is for us? Sure, but we should go over a few things first. Oh, well, maybe Teddy can actually help us out with that. Teddy, do you remember all the stuff we've talked about about gender? Um, I think so. Is this a test? Oh, no, Teddy. We'll totally help you out if you need it. There's a lot to know about gender. Do you remember what non-binary and binary mean? Oh, we just learned about this. Binary is boy and girl, and non-binary is in between. That's right. The gender binary is just boys and girls, and non-binary gender is when you aren't just boy or girl. You're somewhere outside of or in between boy and girl. Yeah, I got it. Good job, Teddy. Gender spectrums are about putting those two ideas together. But, but, but how? Well, Teddy, I think it'll actually be easier to understand if we just show you. If you're looking at binary gender, it seems pretty black and white, either boy or girl. But we know that's not true. Gender isn't only black and white because we can see where there is a spectrum, a whole color spectrum in between black and white, just like there is gender outside of and in between boy and girl. And there you have it. That's a spectrum, we just made one. Whoa, we're back in color, just like you said. Yep, gender is way cooler when you can see all of its colors. Does this stuff about spectrums make sense now, Teddy? Yeah, I think so. Want to see where I am on the gender spectrum? Yes, yes, yes. There, that's me. Oh, and that's me. Maybe I'm there or there? That's okay, Teddy. Maybe you don't know yet, or maybe it changes for you, or maybe you're in multiple places. The sky's the limit. Gender spectrums are fun. Thanks so much for helping us out today, AC. Thanks for having me, Lindsay. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching Queer Kid Stuff. If you have any questions about what we talked about today, you can always ask your grown-up. Now, grab a piece of paper and some crayons, just like us, and make your own gender spectrum. And we've got brand new videos coming at you every other Wednesday. Don't forget to hit subscribe, like the Facebook page, and donate to our Patreon page, like our pals over there. You can also check out our website, QueerKidStuff.com. We'll, we'll see you next, next time at Queer Kid, Kid Stuff. Queer Kid Stuff. I'm Lindsay, and this is my best friend, Teddy. Today, we're talking about the T in LGBT. Or somewhere in between. We all are part of one big family. Gay means happy. Queer Kid Stuff. You are enough here at Queer Kid Stuff. Welcome to the final part of our four-part series, breaking down the letters in LGBT. You ready, Teddy? Ready. Okay. Today, we are talking about the fourth letter, T. T stands for trans or transgender. Ooh, that's a cool new word. Definitely, Teddy. Let's get into it. Do you have any siblings, Teddy? Yes. I have a little baby bear brother. And I have a little sister. Do you remember when your little baby bear brother was born? Yeah. Well, do you remember the very first thing you learned about the new baby bear in your life? 
Um, that he cried a lot? <laughs> no, Teddy. You probably learned that your little baby bear brother was your little baby bear brother. That your new sibling was a boy. Oh, yeah, that's definitely it. That's the very first thing doctors tell you when a new baby is born, whether they're human or bear. They tell parents that their baby is a boy or a girl. That's called a gender assignment, when doctors announce that babies are boys and girls. But now I'm confused. When we talked about gender, we said that there aren't just boys and girls. You have a really great memory, Teddy. You're right. There's something a bit weird about how doctors assign gender to babies. That's because there aren't only boys and girls, and because not all people identify with their assigned gender. Oh, so the doctors are wrong sometimes? Yes, Teddy. Sometimes doctors don't assign the right genders. When a person does not identify with the gender they're assigned when they're born, they are trans or transgender. People who are trans can be boys or girls or people too. And I can always ask someone their pronoun, just like you taught me. That's right, Teddy. There's also another word you should know. It's the word cisgender. Someone who is cisgender does identify with the gender they're assigned. Okay, so since you are assigned girl and you use she, then you are cisgender. That is exactly right, Teddy. Lindsay, I'm really good at this gender stuff now. Okay, so now we want to know how you identify. You can let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching season one of Queer Kid Stuff. We really appreciate you watching and we hope you enjoyed learning about everything LGBT, gay, feminist, all of those fun things we've been talking about. All right, that's it from me and Teddy. We'll see you next time on Queer Kid Stuff. Hey there, friends. Hey. Welcome to Queer Kid Stuff. I'm Lindsay. And I'm Teddy. Today, we're talking more about gender. Again? Yes, Teddy. And this time we're going to learn a brand new word, non-binary. All are part of one big family. Are you ready? Ready, Lindsay. Okay, today we're learning a new word that has to do with gender. I like new words. It's a new vocabulary word. Vocabulary. The new word is non-binary. Oh, I like that word. Non-binary. What does it well, mean? Well, actually it's kind of two words, binary and non-binary. Huh? I'm gonna bring in a friend to help me out with this one. You ready to meet them? Oh, oh yes, friends, new friends. Hey there. Hello. Hello. Teddy, this is my friend Emmy. Emmy actually helps us out with queer kid stuff. Yep, I make the puppets and help make everything look good. Oh, cool. Hi, Emmy. I've got two questions for you. Shoot. What are your pronouns and how do you identify? I use they, them pronouns and I identify as transmasculine and non-binary. That's that's our new word. It sure is, Teddy. <laughs> Emmy, can you help Lindsay tell me what non-binary means? Absolutely. Uh, you're going to talk about what the binary is first, right, Lindsay? Yeah, I think that's the right place to start. So it's actually pretty simple, Teddy. The first part of the word binary is bi. Do you recognize that? Yeah, like bisexual. Exactly. So binary has to do with two things. Bi means two. Those two things have to do with gender. The binary is about boys and girls, that boy and girl are the only two genders. But that's not right. There are they pronouns. Exactly right, Teddy. Uh, that's actually what non-binary is. Non-binary means that you aren't part of the binary, that you fall outside of or somewhere in between boy and girl. A lot of people who use they pronouns identify as non-binary, like me. Oh. So non-binary is another word for someone who uses they pronouns? Exactly. Does that mean I'm non-binary too? 
Maybe. Uh, there are some other words people use to describe themselves when they are non-binary. Yeah, some people use gender creative. Or gender fluid. Or gender queer. Actually, do you remember our friend Claudia from our intersex episode? Oh yeah, oh yeah. She said she's gender queer. That's right, Teddy. Is there a word that feels right to you? I don't know. But I really like our new word. Non-binary. It's just so much fun to say. I like it a lot too, Teddy. It took me a little while to figure it out, but I'm really glad I found this word. Thanks for having me on, Lindsay. Good to have you on, Emmy. See you around. Bye, Emmy. I'm really glad Emmy could help me teach you what non-binary means. Me too. Well, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching Queer Kid Stuff. We've got a whole new season of videos coming every other Wednesday. Don't forget to hit subscribe on the YouTube channel, like the Facebook page, and donate to our Patreon page like our pals over there. You can also check out our website, QueerKidStuff.com. We'll, we'll see, see you next, next time, time at, at QueerKidStuff. Queer Kid hey there, friends. I'm Lindsay. And I'm Teddy. Welcome to Queer Kid Stuff. Hi, hi, hi. Today, we're talking about... It's okay to... Whoa! What was that, Lindsay? That's what we're talking about today. We're talking about... It happened again! It happened again! Are you getting it, Teddy? What is it? Tell me, tell me, tell me! We're talking about transition. Oh. I don't get it. Queer kid stuff. You are enough. Here at Queer Kid Stuff. Ready, Teddy? Ready, Lindsay. Okay, today we're talking about transitions. Teddy, you already know what a transition is. I do? We just did one. We did? Yeah. Well, let's do it again and see if you can get it. Ready, Teddy? I already told you I'm ready, Lindsay. Teddy, that's our transition. Oh, it is? A transition is when you are between things or places or activities. Like when we go from our theme song back to the episode topic. Oh. Teddy, what do you usually do at school after you have free playtime? We read a story. Okay, well, what happens in between playtime and story time? Um... Oh, 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 we clean up. That's right. Is that a, a transition? Exactly. That's one kind of a transition. That's not a very fun transition. Well, maybe not, but transitions are super important because they're how we experience change. We use transitions for lots of different things. But what does that have to do with us and queer kid stuff? I was just about to get to that. I know it's been a while, Teddy, but do you remember what the T stands for in LGBTQ+. Trans! It stands for trans or transgender. That's right. And what does it mean to be trans? It's when you do not identify with your assigned gender. That's right. Being trans means that the gender and pronouns you identify with don't match the gender you were assigned when you were born. But what does that have to do with transition? Well, sometimes, trans and non-binary grown-ups go through what we call a transition. They do? Not all trans and non-binary people go through a transition, but a lot do. And transitions can look totally different from one person to another. Why don't we give my friend Riley a call? She'll help me explain. Hey, Riley. Hi. Hi, Lindsay. Hi, Teddy. Riley, what are your pronouns and how do you identify? I use she, her, or they, them pronouns, and I'm a non-binary trans woman. Riley, I was just trying to explain transitioning to Teddy. Can you help me out? Sure. A gender transition is when a trans or non-binary person does something so their gender identity matches their gender presentation. This can look really different for different trans and non-binary people. For a trans woman, it might be as simple as growing her hair long, but there are lots of things you can do. Some grown-ups take hormones, either estrogen, estrogen. or testosterone. Testosterone. Got it. Estrogen helps someone present more feminine, and testosterone helps someone present more masculine, like growing facial hair. Some trans and non-binary grown-ups might get surgery as part of their transition. There are lots of different kinds of surgery. Usually we talk about top surgery and bottom surgery. Those kinds of surgeries help trans and non-binary people feel more at home in their bodies. What does that mean? What's a body home? Some people don't totally feel comfortable with their bodies. Oh then they should watch our video about body positivity. They definitely should, Teddy. But sometimes it's a little more complicated than that. It really depends on the person, but some trans and non-binary people need to do certain things to feel like they've fully transitioned. And others might feel totally happy with their transition just by taking hormones or changing their clothes. 
That's right, Lindsay, some trans and non-binary kids might transition too. Kids who are trans and non-binary can take something called a hormone blocker that stops their estrogen or testosterone so it's easier for them to transition when they're grown-ups. But it's really, really important to talk to your grown-ups and a doctor about that if you think it's something you might yep, want. Yep, I think we've covered it, Riley. I think so. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Riley. Bye. Don't forget to check out Riley's channel. She has tons of super informative videos about the LGBTQ plus community, current events, pop culture, and even some kids media thrown in there. We'll see, see you next time, time at Queer, Queer Kids Kid Stuff. Stuff. Hey there, friends. Welcome to Queer Kids Stuff. I'm Lindsay. And I'm Teddy. And today we're talking more about gender. More about gender? Yep. Today we're talking about gender roles and stereotypes. Queer Kids Stuff. Are enough here at Queer Kid Stuff. Alrighty, Teddy. Today we're talking about gender roles and stereotypes. Those don't sound like a lot of fun, Lindsay. Well, yeah, you're right, but we can make it fun. Gender roles and stereotypes are all about rules, but sometimes, not always, but sometimes, rules can be broken. Ooh, are we gonna break the rules? Well, yeah, kinda. Do you remember when we talked about gender expression last week? Yeah! Gender expression is how you express or present your gender. Clothes and hairs and things like that. Feminine, masculine, and androgynous. Androgynous. You got it! Do you remember how I said that anyone can express themselves any way they want, no matter their pronouns or gender identity? Yeah, I remember that, Lindsay. Okay, well, not everyone agrees with that. What? Why? Some people think that only girls should be feminine and only boys should be masculine. What about androgynous? Sometimes people get confused when someone's androgynous. Sometimes people get confused about me because I can look and express myself androgynously. They get confused? They get confused about my gender, about what gender I am and pronouns I use. But you can't tell someone's gender just by looking at them. They should just ask your pronouns. I totally agree, but not everyone knows they should do that. Then they should just watch our show so they know better next time. They really should, Teddy. So, gender roles and stereotypes have to do with these rules, that girls should be feminine and boys should be masculine, and everyone should be either a boy or a girl, nothing in between. And it's not just about your gender expression. It's about other things, too. Have you ever visited the toy aisle in a store before? Of course I have. OK, well, some stores have a boy side and a girl side of the aisle. Have you ever seen that before? I guess so. Well, that's a part of gender roles, that certain toys are for girls and certain toys are for boys. But, but that doesn't make any sense. Can't I just play with whatever toys I like? Exactly, Teddy. It's just like gender expression. You should be able to express yourself any way you like, and you can play with whatever toys you like, no matter your gender. I don't like gender roles, Lindsay. They sound kind of mean. I don't like other people telling me what I can do. I know, Teddy. Gender roles aren't fun, but they're really important to understand because they're kind of a big problem right now especially when it comes to bathrooms. That's where people get confused about gender the most. What? But everyone uses the bathroom. Exactly, Teddy. Bathrooms shouldn't be scary, but for some people, they can be because of these rules. Because they think that people who are masculine only use he pronouns. People get confused when someone who is masculine is in the girl's bathroom. Same thing for the boy's bathroom. Everyone should just be able to pee. That's right, Teddy. And some places really help us out by having gender-neutral bathrooms. That makes everything a lot easier and more comfortable for everyone. Peeing shouldn't be so complicated. Yeah, gender is complicated, but peeing shouldn't be. Exactly. Do you understand gender roles now, Teddy? And why it's important to know about them? Yeah, I think so. I want to get rid of them. No more gender roles. No more gender roles. I definitely agree with you, Teddy. We actually have a song all about gender. Want to hear it? Yes, please.
she for girls and he for guys. There's they and them for in between. So you can be the happiest and we can sing. Oh, gender, let's not get in a fender over gender. All right. Thank you so much for watching Queer Kid Stuff. We've got a whole lot of new episodes coming up for you every other Wednesday. Don't forget to hit subscribe on the YouTube channel. You can also like the Facebook page and a ton of other social media at Queer Kid Stuff. You can also check out our website, QueerKidStuff.com, and support us on our Patreon page like these people over here. And that's it from us. We'll, we'll see you, see next, you time next time at Queer, Queer Kid, Kid Stuff. Kid Stuff.